Traditionally, healthcare has been a tag you're it. You know, the patient calls and tag we're it until the patient comes in for their care and then we tag them off to the pharmacist. And the medical home says, we're going to track you, we're going to be committed to you for your life. And whatever that means, we're going to be there for you. A patient-centered medical home is a care delivery model where patients come to get their care with a primary provider and the care is coordinated, it's accessible, it's cost-effective, and the best practices or standards of care provided for the patient. We want the patient to be at the center. Four years ago at our strategic planning meeting, we talked about the medical home and we had a long discussion about what was the best possible care that we could provide to our community. If we could do a better job for our community, if we could add value to our community, what would that be? and how can we measure it. We felt that medical home really fit that as good as anything that we found. And so we felt that it was important to take the steps required to get medical home certification. We actually started probably back in 2009 planning the medical home. And in order to do that, our first objective was to get the electronic medical record in place so that we could track and trend our patients and actually identify patients through the electronic medical record. Once that was done, we were able to establish population bases. So how many diabetics did we have in our practice? From there, we moved to how often are they being seen. For example, diabetics should be seen every six months to every year. And the first thing we did was to make sure that our diabetics were being seen at least yearly. Well, our patients love it. If you are a diabetic, now you know that you'll get a call from us once every six months if you're controlled and once every quarter if you're uncontrolled. We are partners with our patients. If that means we have to call them every day for a week, we'll call them every day for a week. We'll do whatever it takes for them to get past that hump, so to speak, and be fully invested in their care delivery. The biggest barrier we had, first of all, was just getting people in for regular checkups. And one of the ways we overcame that was our refill process. Patients now, if they have a chronic condition, are required to have a checkup or a physician's visit before their medications are refilled. And that has helped tremendously. And then some of our diversity within our population has required a lot of patient education. What is a refill? What does it mean after a 30-day sample that you go get your meds refilled? What does that mean? Those types of things. The idea is to put the patient at the center and then to really manage the information flow. We talk a lot about goal setting. What do you want out of your care? Is there something that you can't do right now that you would like to be able to do? What we find is when you get engaged in your care on a day-to-day -day basis, you manage your care better. It's more, more meaningful, more personal to you, and you feel like you are in charge. So the medical home is us making a commitment to them for life. It comes back to the physician saying, we want to do this because it's the right thing to do. Four years ago, we were probably at the 50th percentile for patients' perception of our follow-up on results. We've been at the 95th percentile for our three years running. It's because the service isn't over until the patient has the result. The cost has been mitigated by the market share and the loyalty that we've got from our community. This type of uh, model for the delivery of healthcare is really critical going into the future. We have to find a way to better manage people so that we don't use uh, so much resource. And this is the way to do it.